Creating real-time hair is sometimes seen as a very complicated and technical task. The reason for this is because you are required to have a very beautiful result that competes with your traditional strand-based hair, but also you have to be worried about maintaining a certain poly count budget. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing my workflow of achieving all of these in a few easy steps. So if you're up for it, let's get started. To begin, we have to create a hair card texture. So there are a couple of ways you can go up about creating this. You can either generate this texture here in Blender or go on Google to find it. The one I use for this is this software called Fibershop. It allows you to kind of generate hair strands, which you can dynamically adjust. And then once you're happy, you can big the map and then export it. There's a free version. The only limitation for the free version is that you are limited to 5, uh, 512 by 512 image resolution, which is pretty low, and you don't have access to some export parameters. But I purchased this li the license for this, and it has been awesome because it allows you to export 4K. So you can check it out with the free version if you're interested to see how it works for you. Once you create your tex texture, you want to adjust them to... Uh, you want to create an image plane with an edge loop looking like this. And in our UV map, I have imported it all and placed them. I didn't fill it up because from experiment, I, I got a better result with placing the UV like this. I'm going to show you how we can create variations later. But then all the exported map from Fibershop is brought into Blender where I plug them in from the color ambient. Um, specularity, normal map, and depth map, which is bump map. Everything has been plugged in, including the alpha, to be able to get this. Importantly, if you're previewing it in EV, you want to make sure you set it either to blend or alpha clip. Now, to make bring everything together, let's create, or let's basically model the hair and how it would look. We're going to be using the new geometry node system, so I'm going to add a new curve, empty hair. So if you're familiar with my previous video showing this add-on called hair brick, it's basically a um, geometry node, but it provides an interface for the geometry node. You can support this channel by getting a copy or at least checking it out. The link is in the description. So once we have our hair, we can go into the particle sculpt mode and we can get the add brush. I set the points to 50 and the length to 0.5, allowing me to place it, and we get a long looking hair. Uh, I think it's too long. I'm going to probably reduce it to 0.25. And we can see what we have. So this is our hair strand. Uh, just to kind of um, quickly go over how we are going to instance this hair cut on this hair str um, this the scubs. Uh, let's quickly just. Um, Create a quick group. We want to go to modifier by selecting either the object or this hair curve. And in the modifier, we want to add instancer. It requires you to select a collection. So I have gone ahead to put this uh, plane in a collection. So we have it called hair card collection. Uh, we can input that collection, haircut collection, right here. We're going to apply the rotation and scale for this. So it requires you to select um, a target object so you can align the tilt. So the, the plane is always facing the normal of the target object. And we want to switch it from 3D mode to 2D mode. And right now, everything seems crazy. Uh, we just need to scale it down. It's in. So once you do that, it should look good. And now this allows you to basically group the plane as you would groom like your normal hair strands, and you can see how the textures are working um, right in the 3D viewport, which comes in very handy. The 3D feature of the instance allows you to like instance any object. So let's say we want to instance Susan on this hair for some reason or we want to instance three Susans or let's make it 
six seasons on the hair. The way we do that is uh, basically, let's hide this, uh, let's add another instancer. We'll move season into a new collection and select season. Select this as target object and tilt. I'm going to disable random rotation so they all have even rotation. And as you see, we have Susan duplicate uh, um, instance on the curves. And you can basically groom Susan. Um, you have a couple of settings where you can adjust the width to match the final result. So you can adjust the depth. Um, you can move it along the curve for some reason if you want to do that. So if you're in 2D mode, it kind of flattens Susan. So uh, the instancer node is pretty powerful, so you should check it out if you have the Hebrick add-on. Okay, so we are able to kind of um, just groom. Let's go ahead and start working on this. I'm going to just work on it a little bit, pause the video and come back once I'm done. I'm going to grab an add brush. So remember, we're trying to maintain a certain amount of poly count. So we can turn off the instancer for now and we can scale the hair with the radius. Okay. So we are trying to maintain a certain polygon. That means we cannot add any crazy amount of strands because each of the strands will represent a plane with vertices. So you, you want to be kind of conscious about that. When creating it so this is just what we're gonna add and we can go ahead and style this I'm gonna grab the stick hook brush so everything kind of aligns and I'll grab the snake hook uh, the shrink and set it to subtract and just trim them all at once Okay, so let's call this our first hairstyle. Okay, probably. And give it some bend. Now we can just enable the instance modifier. And we can see it automatically just conforms nicely. I'm going to change this to alpha hat um, clip okay i just found it's more it looks nicer in the 3d viewport for me so we can adjust this uh, one thing you can do also is if like we're seeing th this hair card kind of looking like this so this doesn't look nice we can tilt the hair card to match what we want so you have you can randomize the tilt get, um, get a nice result and it's always going to be facing the normal of this target object okay so to fix the fact that it's kind of floating in the head we wanted to conform to the geometry. I just added, I just exposed another slider. This will allow you kind of pull the hair inwards to kind of sit on the scalp. So with combination of the snap, then it's going to really sit on the head. So I'll go ahead and work on the rest and come back once I'm done. okay so i'm done and we can see the final result what we have here so basically i have just going over everything i have four curve system the first one is this curve then we have this one then we have like the flyaway hair and all of this are uh, but basically 
geometries. You can see, and then we have the hair in the front. And they all work from the same material. So the difference between this is in the UV, I had scaled it up to kind of give it more thinner edges. So if I scale this up, it's still the same. The same hair texture. So if we want to create variations of this hair, we can duplicate this since it still belongs to this collection. So the hair card one. So we can duplicate this, go into the UV edit and move this on the X axis slightly. So the instancer will randomly select a new, uh, will randomly select a new object for the instance. So we can scale this up. And there you go, you get a very nice complicated hair. We can always select this. Go to the instancer and randomize the collection selection process. If we want to still fill up those patches, uh, we can this is a new slider which I just added. Um, so if you have this add-on, you can go and update your copy. I added more sliders um, for this, like the confirm, so that it, hate, it really aids in giving you the finest control for every single thing. So you don't need the haircuts at this moment, so you can basically turn them on off. You even want to get it looking even smoother. We can select this all as if they don't have subdivisions already. You apply more subdivision surface for smoother look. So now for the rendering aspect, for the rendering part, we are going to use Psychos. But we're going to, I'm going to, I mean, with EV, it's easy to render it in EV um, since. Uh, since it, it, you kind of set up the preview with EV, but one quick tip if you want to render this with Psychos, um, I think the, the, the fact the shadows kind of layered on top of each other, each other makes it not looking good. So what I did was to duplicate this mix, plug in this transparency, and we'll add a color object info, oh, sorry, a light part, and plug in the shadow rail. So it's going to take away some of those shadows so that you kind of have a nice nicer looking asset. Uh, we can also increase the roughness to give it some specularity. Let's give it like five. To get a nice looking um, strand hair. And you can always uh, play with the color to get a different look each time. You have it looking nice in Eevee and you have it looking nice in Psychos. So let's take it to Unreal and see how it will look there. To make it into a mesh, um, all you need to do is to select each curve. Uh, let's invert the selection so we have just the curve object selected and you go to object convert mesh and we can actually join them all since they all share the same material we just had them separated for easy navigation and we can see that the hair is uh, quite low poly uh, for the most part and we just have what's needed so you can even take your time and spend time to really optimize it even some more. And this is our final result that will be taken to Unreal. So I'll go ahead and export these two objects. So let me give this a material name. Call this hair. 
call this hat object and hat so here is it in Unreal I'm still kind of getting getting started with Unreal I don't know how to set stuff up so much uh, but I'm able to get in the alpha and the objects into Unreal and you can see how it's looking so this is definitely something you can experiment with and that will be the, the end of this tutorial I hope it was informative and you picked up one or two things if you enjoyed it please give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube can recommend it to more users and if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so bye bye for now see you next time